Hey friends, hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well for your self distancing and your quarantine and that you're not going too crazy and that you're finding things to keep yourself busy at this time really loving on your children and homeschooling and you know having date nights with your significant other i've been doing that watched a great movie with my husband last night and so i'm going to be doing a few more videos i first want to thank everyone who has been starting to follow me or subscribe to my channel the channel has been dormant and i haven't been really busy but i figured this is the perfect time to start creating more content if there's something that you want me to talk about, please let me know. If you like this video or any other video, please hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And um, yeah, just stay tuned for all the content that I have coming. I can't wait to, you know, um, hear how you like it. And I hope that you do. Take care. <music>
not everyone's looking for what I'm looking for. And that's another thing resellers have to get used to is that when they go into the outlet, that it's not a big competition because not everyone is looking for what they're looking for. So I got comfortable with sourcing. Now, my issue back then was I really was just kind of picking up all kinds of things. A lot of stuff sold, but then I was stuck with a lot of inventory but it was great just kind of learning and seeing. And back then I wasn't really big on checking comps and all. So yeah, so I went into another area because I did want to talk about relisting, but I also wanted to share that. I, I think, you know, my videos is a natural process, just kind of whatever comes out of my head and I'm going through perimenopause. I like to share that so that people know that doing these videos and doing the podcast allows me to keep my mind like moving and fresh. So sometimes if I have another thought, I like to get it out because if I don't, then I'll forget it. So just bear with me and I appreciate you watching these videos. So that was the sourcing part of it. I didn't like sourcing and I had to learn how to do it. And then finally, after watching videos and things like that, I found like a, a good middle ground that worked for me. So I started learning brands and I started learning how to check comps. And then I started making more money when I started educating myself on the business, okay? The other thing... I like to do is relist. I started the conversation talking about that. Relisting is really important for me because I don't like sourcing. I have an anxiety about it. And it actually economically, money-wise, relisting makes sense to me. Now, in a few minutes, I'll talk about the value of relisting. So it's really the value of relisting. This is the value of relisting. Relisting gives you an opportunity to look at the items you have in a new light. Many of us have items that have been sitting for a long time. Especially if we started, you know, two, three years ago, you have items and you just like sourcing and you keep adding things to your inventory and you're not taking a couple minutes to go in and look at the inventory that you have. So it's really great, regardless of what platform that you sell on, if items are not moving, it's this is a great time to reevaluate. So you, you go through whatever type of system you have. Hopefully you have some type of system, you know what you have available, right? Um, if you don't, if you sell on Poshmark, they have an inventory list that you can go, an uh, inventory report that you can pull up and it will have all the items. And the cool thing about the inventory report, it also lets you know how long the items have been sitting. And this is good for people who don't usually keep track of their items. Like you don't have, like I write everything down, oh, excuse me, into a book. And so I can go into my composition book and open it up and go exactly to the item and know where it's stored within my inventory. Where the inventory report on Poshmark, you can print that out and it will help you find, you know, know what your item is and also how long the item's been sitting there. So I definitely say it's a good idea to download it. If you don't like the um, the report that, that Poshmark gives you, then you can redesignate it to like an Excel sheet or create some type of spreadsheet or something like that that works for you. But it's a really great tool because it will tell you. Like I, I pulled it up a couple months ago when it first came out just to kind of test it. And I had items had been sitting in there for over 400 days. That's more than a year considering it's 365 days in a year. So I was able to kind of like look at it a little bit and determine what items I wanted to kind of play around with. And I was, my situation was a little bit different because I was already reevaluating some things. I have decided I had too much inventory, so I wanted to slowly go through my inventory and decide what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to get rid of. And I decided, you know what, I wanna focus on shoes and bags more than anything else right now. So I started kind of going through everything. I'm, I kept a lot of tops, I kept a lot of sweaters a lot of um, jackets, dresses really sell for me. You can see all these dresses on the rack behind me. And so I kept items that I knew would sell and then I still kind of source in between. So this is how I relist. So I'll go through once a week and decide about 40 items that I want to relist. And I break it down into categories and that's what keeps it fun and not, it doesn't get stale for me. So every day I'll write down what category I'm interested in pulling items from. And say, for instance, today is dresses. So I'll say today I want to focus on 20 dresses. Now, if I have 20 dresses available, but if I only have about 10 dresses available, I'll focus on those 10 dresses and then pick 10 items from another category, say, for instance, shoes. 
And so then I'll look at how long they've been sitting there and start from the oldest item. Then I treat it as if it's a brand new item. I check comps. And the reason that I'm checking comps, because there are people who don't check comps. I check comps. And if you don't know what comps are, comps are comparables. You're comparing an item that you have available to the cost of an item that has sold. You want to look at sold items because you want to get an idea of what your item could sell for. You figure out the bottom line, but you want to, comparing is just giving you an idea. So if it's 20 dresses just like yours and someone sold their dress for a hundred and then the other dresses in between have sold between 180, then you can find a middle ground. So you probably can't get a hundred, but maybe put it at 75 with the expectation of getting $65 for that dress. So that is why you're checking comps. A lot of people don't understand that and they just throw out a number and they wonder why their items aren't selling if that's what you want to do then that's fine but I'm helping you to understand that is why you're checking comps so so if I have a new address and I decide yeah I think I, I check comps and it's really worth saving and keeping then I'll go in and relist it so I'll delete it well the first thing that I'll do is I decide if it needs new photos if it doesn't need new photos I just save the photos in a document I like to do mine on my computer some people they um this is, they save the image on their phone, but that doesn't work for me because also when you save it a screenshot on your phone, some of the black line shows and it doesn't take the whole photo when you go to relist it. So I save mine into a photo um, folder called Poshmark Photos because I only sell on Poshmark and Etsy. And most of the stuff that I'm putting on Etsy is like stuff that's kind of new anyway that I some things I already had and some are new. So we're going to stick with Poshmark. So I put them in a folder called Poshmark Photos and then I may write down like the price that I want to charge it at, maybe some details like the size or something, just because in my mind um, in a couple minutes it could go because I again have perimenopause so I have moments of like brain fog where I forget stuff. So I write just about everything down and you don't even have to be going through perimenopause. We all go through moments that we forget. So then what I do is I copy and I copy the description, I delete the first listing, then I sell on Poshmark on the computer, hit sell on Poshmark, and then I drop my photos in, paste in the description and fill in all the other information. And the cool thing is my title is already part of the description. So I just copy the title and paste it right into the title. And this gives me an opportunity to um, add in the additional information. So mind you, if I listed this dress two years ago and I've done nothing to it, relisting nothing, I've just been sharing it, this gives me a chance to really look at the dress and see if I've missed some information as far as like um, measurements and things like that. So I go in, pop that into the description. My comps are really great, not realizing they were really low before or you you're checking comps because you've dropped the price. Some people put it back up to the original price, not realizing that the original price may not be good. Two years ago, that dress was in trend, but now it's not. You still, it's still really cute and somebody might buy it, but it's not as in demand as it was two years ago. So the price that you originally had it set at is not a good price anymore. So that's why you're checking comps because you don't know where something may have changed. For some reason, it could be the most popular dress now where you only had it for 25, but you can list it for 55 at this point. So now you list your item, you, you hit, you know, list and then you're done. So now you've listed that dress and that's so cool. And then you do the same thing. So if you have new items that you want to list, what I would do, say for instance, I had 20 items and I said, oh, I want to break them down during the course of the week. And I want to try to list 10 items a day. So I'll list five new items and I'll relist. And to the system, it's brand new items if you're relisting. And this is the other thing. A lot of people say, well, what happens to my likes? I'm losing my likes. This is the way you look at it. If people wanted your item, they would have purchased it. I call it window shopping. They don't want your item. If they wanted it, they would have purchased it. So hopefully this helps you. Relisting is about 65% of my inventory. If I get new items... I'll do, you know, between two and five new listings and then about five relistings a day. And I will tell you, last week, the second week in March, third week in March were when the 
we're on the fourth week of March. Yeah, last week of March. So the third week of March, I relisted items. Four of those items have sold. Like I sold back to back. I sold a bag yesterday and the day before that, I sold some sneakers that I had relisted for a higher price than originally. So relisting does work. People are looking even in the time of that we're going through things right now. So you use your best judgment and find out what works for you. So hopefully that helps friends. Hey friends, so I want to talk about how I get free shoes. I get free shoes because my husband gives them to me. <laughs> my husband is Thomas. He's Pasha Dude X on um, the Poshmark app. And he's made a lot of friends and he has like a shoe guy, a coat guy. He does, he sells at the flea market. He has a clean up business. Yeah, he's a busy guy. He doesn't sit still. And um, even though we're going through some things, Right now, he tries to keep busy, whether it be around the house or, you know, listing his items, taking fit pictures. He's always organizing. He's always throwing things away. So he has a guy that gets shoes for him. And what happens is once a week, Thomas brings home about 40 pairs of shoes and he'll say, go and take what you want. And normally, I probably only take about five pair because he sells different than me. I actually just said to him, can you start getting me some women's shoes? randomly he'll come in with some women's shoes but not with the focus his focus is more on men's shoes that's where his expertise is with men's clothes but I just recently said to him can you start you know finding some women's shoes that maybe I can sell and so I've taken like the men's shoes and they still really do well the cool thing is if he has like 40 things I probably take about five no more than seven because they're not always brands that appeal to me we have different tastes and people always ask me all the time why we don't run our business together we're at different places in our life and we have different tastes and we have a different business structure we are partners in life and we share a common interest in reselling but we don't intermix our business and so i want to show you a couple pair of shoes i don't usually do like hauls and things like that but some of the shoes that i got were really cute and this is um some of the things that thomas have brought me so these are these men's toms ankle boots i thought they were really nice he didn't even know what they were because he's all about like it should be on the bottom of the shoe but these are in really good condition i like them a lot so these those and they are a men's ten and a half i really like them they're lightweight fabric so that's that and then these our Uggs, look how cute they are. Wooden and rubber bottom. And what I like about these, is I'll show you in a minute, they fold down. So look at that. That is a cute boot. I like these. Yes, it is spring, but I think that items probably sell really well, okay? My favorite brand of all time, and I always talk about like when I first started selling dance goes <laughs> that I sold them really low. I did. I I literally was giving dance goes away, and I knew about dance goes because I I was a baker, so I wore dance goes in the kitchen. I bought two pairs of dance goes new for one hundred twenty five dollars. So I never thought in my mind when I started selling on Poshmark to sell them not at one hundred twenty five because they weren't brand new, but I was selling them for ten five and ten dollars. I don't think maybe twenty. Um, they'll probably be pushing it and I was wondering why Oh, I was getting all these sales because Thomas he wasn't doing a lot of women's shoes but he did no dance goes so but these are really cute dance go boots like look at that they're in really great condition with a little buckle and it is adjustable and then the side zipper and so this the same signature dance go heel and when I was wearing them, because, you know, dance code was more for like a professional shoe, that they didn't really have these cute like boots. And um, and they had like these sandals. I didn't even know they held it. I just knew they had like the clogs and the mules. And so this last pair is my favorite pair. These are also dance goes. I mean, like seriously. <laughs> Look how cute these. They're rain, little rain boots. Like, who would want to wear them as a rain boot, though? I have to clean the bottoms. But look how cute that is. And so these are some of the free items that I get from Thomas. So another way to get free items, I've probably talked about this on the podcast, is to ask your friends, tell your friends and family what you do around this time. Everyone, we're, you know, we're quarantined, we're self-distancing, people are probably starting to clean their house and things like that. 
reach out to everyone as you know and ask them that before they give away items to um, put things on the porch in a bag and you can pull up and get them. So I just wanted to share with you how I got like these free shoes and how cute this last group is. Thanks for watching friends.